I'm John White. With me today is Teddy Peters. Teddy is a master gardener here in Doniana County. Teddy, what have you brought for us today? Well, I brought a few things. The first is um, a specimen from my friend's Tatalpa tree. She uh, is really worried because um, all of these clumps are showing up and looks almost like mistletoe all over the tree, and it's now spreading to uh, the second tree. So we've got these uh, small leaf clumps, and uh, I thought I'd ask John what it is. Okay, unfortunately, this is something bad. Uh, this is an insect-induced, um, um, it's not really a gall, but it's insect-induced rapid growth. And uh, there's a mite that attacks the very tip end of the mm. uh, mite or an aphid that uh, hits the very ends. We usually see this on desert willow. And this is really the first one I've seen on Chitalpa, which is a cross with a desert willow, so it's not surprising that, you know, that we are starting to see it. But this is a problem. It's getting a little bit worse year by year. And there's not a whole lot known about this insect as far as uh, how to attack it. Um, possibly a dormant spray in the spring to help uh, try and ward it off then. But as far as when to try and go in with some other type of insecticide or whether it's even uh, worthwhile going in with an insecticide during the season is not really known yet. Is it and best to uh, cut each one of these clumps off? Yeah, cut off? these off because they're going to stop the tree from, from blooming. And this is what the rest of the tree looks okay. like. Okay. Now, this time of year, Chitalpas, if they aren't receiving adequate water, uh, do get this kind of uh, oh. burn on them. They are it not is on a, a sprinkler. Yeah, they I mean, are, they are not a uh, drought-tolerant tree. Oh. So they really need larger amounts of water. So a lot of times when we start to see the leaf burn and there's a little bit of spotting, it looks like a, a leaf spot. It's actually where it's, the tree has gotten a little stressed. Okay. So they may want to check around the base, make sure it's getting watered good and right. make sure the root system's good okay. on the tree. Okay, what mm. else do you have for us? Well, as you know, this is my first year ever doing a vegetable garden. And I planted yellow squash and I didn't get yellow squash. No, that isn't <laughs> yellow squash. So uh, I'm not sure if I picked this at the right time. Um, this has gotten, I've picked two of them this size, and, and they're really uh, firm. But uh, having never grown this before, I'm just curious as to when, if I picked it at the right time, or if I should have waited. OK. Or if I picked too late. Well, you, you may have gotten some kind of uh, mix in the seed. Possibly, you know, if it was all in the same pack and mm -hmm. you did get some yellow squash out of it. Not a one. Well, then somebody mixed the, either the right. packs up or the seed, and that does periodically happen. But you do have a um, butternut squash, which is a winter squash, so it does have a much thicker skin mm -hmm. on it. And it should turn a little bit more um, golden color, so these are probably still a little bit... Um, too soon. A little bit too soon yet, so okay. go ahead and let them... Let them go, and since they do have a hard skin on them, they'll actually uh, they'll kinda, ripen. Well, them. they'll kind of store themselves, so you can really just kind of leave them on the okay. vine and let them uh, let them go ahead and finish off on okay. the vine. Okay, great. And then you can take them in later in the year. So okay. probably have another month or so on these. Good. Okay, what else? And uh, the other thing I brought in is um, I planted some onion uh, sets. And um, I planted them around the end of April after the, after the frost, but I picked up a bunch of sets at Kmart of the red onion and the, um, the sweet. And I, I planted these deeper, and I think maybe I didn't plant these deep enough because I'm not getting them any bigger than this. Okay, onions are heavy feeders, so they like lots of, uh, lots of nitrogen. They use a lot of... of uh, nutrients out okay. of the soil, so mm. uh, it may not necessarily be the depth of planting as it is, just how much nutrient, how much fertilizer they got, okay. uh, that I kind of I thought I'd thing. give them quite a bit, but... But they, they are heavy feeders, so um, okay. I don't think depth of planting had that much to do with it. It's more just okay. getting, the, getting the food and the water and stuff That's to them and, to and sizing them there. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, we have um, this um, branch off of my tomato plant, and I thought it might be uh, curly top virus, but uh, about one third of my tomato crop is starting to look like this. My fruit is still beautiful, and um, but um, 
I just thought I'd, uh, I haven't seen uh, yet really what curly top virus is, so. Okay. Well, just looking at this sample, kind of feeling the leaves, they still got a lot of flexibility into them. The stem itself is, is still very flexible. Uh, so it probably does not have curly top virus. Great. Now, a lot of times the curling of the leaf can be due to um, a nutrient imbalance in the in the plant. Um, we usually see it more when the the heat comes on. So it's kind of a combination of of things. Mm -hmm. These are usually it's, older leaves down right. towards the bottom. It just and, started uh, uh, this past week. And usually it does not uh, really affect the plant any. Uh, the leaves still have pretty good color on them. If you haven't been fertilizing on a regular schedule, you might put a, a little bit more fertilizer in because it's still got another uh, two or three months right. of growth to go. So okay. I just kind of boosted up with that. Well, I took your suggestion uh, from the other day of um, fertilizing with the 20-20-20, and um, we'll see how that works because I okay. was using a lot less. Okay. Okay. Teddy, thank you very much for You're bringing welcome. the samples today. Thanks.